Thank you. Dear God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. A Sunday school teacher decided to have her young class memorize one of the most quoted passages in the Bible, Psalm 23. She gave them a whole month to learn it. And one young man tried and tried, but he just could not remember past the first line. So on the day they were to recite Psalm 23 in front of the congregation, he was extremely nervous. And when his turn came, he stood in front of everyone and he said, The Lord is my shepherd. And that's all I need to know. (laughs) Don't you just love the resourcefulness of children? Sometimes, though, when life knocks us down and the darkness seems to be winning, if we could just remember that, that the Lord is our shepherd, if that's all we can remember, then that can lift us up and it can lessen the darkness and give us the hope that we need. And I, for one, am happy to know this morning that the Lord is my shepherd. And I'm happy to know that in our scripture this morning, Jesus shows up And he gives Peter the redemption and instructions that he needs to be a fisher of men in this world. And I'm also happy to know that God is ever present with us today through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And I think that we all need to remember that the Lord is our shepherd. And I think we all need a redemption story to remind us that even though we mess up, we are not forsaken, that darkness does not win. And I think we all need reminding that we are not alone as we walk this path. Our lesson this morning has Jesus talking to Peter again. It seems that Jesus has to talk to Peter quite a bit. Sometimes I feel like God has to talk to me quite a bit also. Because sometimes I just can't seem to get out of my own way. And I can't seem to get out of God's way. You ever feel like that? So let's backtrack for just a moment. If you remember, prior to Jesus being arrested, Jesus told Peter that he would disown him, that he would deny even knowing him. To which Peter replies, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Well, we know how far that went. We know that Peter did deny knowing him three times, just as Jesus had predicted. But you see, Peter knew. He knew as soon as he did it what he had done. He felt the weight of his own failure. He remembered that Jesus had said, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. And when the rooster crowed, Peter remembered And he realized that he had done the exact opposite of what he said he would do. He had betrayed Jesus. He had denied even knowing him. And having done this, Peter went outside and wept. How horrible he must have felt. He must have thought that his service was over, that the Lord was finished with him forever. Have you ever felt that God was finished with you? Have you ever felt that God wouldn't want to have anything to do with you because of what you did or what you said or whatever it is that you did to separate yourself from God? I know I have. Have you ever been in a situation like Peter was where perhaps you knew what the right thing to do was, but you just couldn't muster the courage? Maybe the right thing to do was to stand up when someone was being mistreated. Or maybe it was to step in when an untruth was being said about someone. Whatever the situation may have been, there was something you knew you should have done. But you didn't. So what kept you from doing it? 
Probably the same thing that kept Peter from saying that he knew Jesus. Fear. Fear of being found out. Fear of being persecuted or talked about or ostracized. You are left as Peter was, wishing you had done things differently. I've been there many times. But then we hear today's gospel lesson, and it ignites the hope once again. You see, as long as we walk this earth, hope is never lost. Jesus shows up, and hope comes alive. After having a meal, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? But let's notice here what Jesus does not do and does not say. He doesn't make Peter feel guilty. He doesn't humiliate him. He doesn't say, wow, Peter, how could you have done that? You really screwed up. No, he doesn't do these things. He simply asks Peter, do you love me? Three times he asks Peter this, and all three times Peter answers, you know that I love you. But each time Peter responds to Jesus, Jesus gives him a charge. Feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Now let's imagine just for a moment that Jesus appeared here and he asked each one of us if we loved him, to which I hope that we would all reply, yes. yes. Now imagine that Jesus tells us what he told Peter. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. What would that mean to us? Consider this. All throughout Scripture, what are we told to do? We are told to love. We are told to love one another. We are told to love your neighbor as yourself, right? Well, we are also to take care of one another to welcome one another, to share God's love with those we meet, to extend God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness, to be an example of Christ in this world. Perhaps that's a good place for us to start, feeding the lambs and tending and feeding the sheep. Because Peter, Peter reminds me of me. He reminds me of us. You see, I think Peter remains a figure of surpassing interest to us. We know him well because we see him every time we look in the mirror. We see ourselves in this story. In fact, Peter's story is our story. For all of us, the process of Christian growth is long and painful. There are many ups and downs. And it took repeated failure to produce rock solid character in Peter. But Jesus never gave up on him. The truth is that from the beginning to the end, Jesus believed in Peter more than Peter believed in himself. And so it will be for all of us. For it is by God's grace that when we fall again and again, we are able to get back up. In the darkest night of our souls and in the sweetest of victories, grace is always present. Grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. For you see, that is true for us as individuals and for us as a community of faith. When we experience the dark times, the times we question everything, when we act like Peter in our story this morning, God's grace is always there. God's grace is always here. Always. Because God isn't finished with us yet. God still has work for you. God still has work for me. And God still has work for St. Jude's to do. And God still is not finished with St. Jude's. He's not finished with you and He's not finished with me. Amen? Amen. But we're still charged with feeding the lambs and tending the sheep and feeding the sheep. But how do we do that? Last year, as Tim spoke earlier, many of us committed to the I'm In campaign, and it was very successful. And I want to say right now, I am not up here talking about money because the truth of the matter is we just finished the year just a little bit above budget but we finished above budget. 
But here's the truth, and here's the miracle of it all. The I'm In campaign transformed people here in ways that were truly amazing. People exhibited being in by bringing things for brunch, by bringing refreshments between services, by volunteering to participate in ushering or reading or singing in the choir, by helping to set up for events. We even had people volunteering to clean up after events. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) Right, John? (laughs) People volunteered to do yard work, to put the new bricks down in the walkway in the labyrinth, to bring food for the pantry, to staff the food pantry, to fold bulletins. And there were lots of other things that people did to be in. People committed to being in. But today, we're being asked to turn to a new page here at St. Jude. We're being asked to commit to we can. Now, if you're visiting, don't stop listening, okay? (laughs) Instead, I want you to listen and take what you hear wherever you may go, and I want you to plant this seed. Tweak it if you need to, but don't stop listening because I'm not only talking to the St. Jude folk. You see, we can is about how great we can be if we work together to take care of the community that God has entrusted to us. And that can be here in this place for most of us or wherever it is you may worship or wherever it is you may live. Even though we're kicking this off here for St. Jude MCC, the principles are for everyone. So again, we can is about how great we can be if we work together to take care of the community God has entrusted to us. And our story about Peter gives us a perfect place to start. We love Jesus, right? Yes. We love God, right? Yes. We love each other, right? Yes. Most of the time. <laughs> Well, Jesus told Peter to feed my lambs, and I believe that we can do that. Do you? Jesus told Peter to tend my sheep, and I believe that we can do that. Do you? Jesus told Peter to feed my sheep, and I believe that we can do that. Do you? So what are the ways that we can? How do we feed lambs, tend sheep, sheep, and feed sheep? First of all, who are these lambs and sheep anyway? Well, look around. Look to your left. Look to your right. Because they are all of us. All of God's children. The rich, the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, and the unemployable. The alcoholic, the drug addict, the prostitute, the straight, the LGBTQ community, the biracial, the white, the black, the purple, the orange. You get it, right? But God's children are also those that we may not like or who may not like us. Those with whom we disagree or those who disagree with us. Those who may say hateful things about us or post it on Facebook. It's also those who ignore us, who look down upon us, and it's also those with whom we do those same things. It's all of us. So we know who, and now what? What else can we do? Well, here are are a few things we can do, and you're going to be hearing about these as the year goes on. We can live in love. We can pray daily. We can feel the Holy Spirit. We can give freely. We can be disciples. We can let go. We can count our blessings. We can rejoice every day. And we can grow our family. Amen? Amen. But there's more. We can love one another. We can take care of one another. We can welcome one another. We can share God's love. And we can extend God's grace, mercy, and forgiveness to everyone. Amen? Amen? I believe that we can do those things. I believe that we can do more than those things. And you want to know why? Because we are greater when we work together in all that God has entrusted to us. The question is, will we? 
We can. We will. We can. We will. We can. It's like being in middle school all over again. (laughs) We can do this. We can do this in our individual lives. We can do this here at St. Jude. And you can do it wherever you go. Because it's not about just doing it on Sunday mornings for an hour within these walls. It's doing it wherever you are. Amen? Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Thank you, God. Thank you for always being with us, even when we feel like we don't deserve it. Thank you for reminding us through Peter this morning that even though we fail, you aren't finished with us. Help us to carry out your message wherever we go and not just reserve it for this place on Sunday mornings. Help us to remember that by relying on you, we can be your hands in this world. We know that you comfort those who are grieving or hurting. We know that you rejoice with those who are rejoicing, for you are always present in our lives. Thank you for your grace that reminds us that you aren't finished with us, and that there is still much work to do. Bless these gifts that we are about to receive this day, and thank you for the opportunity to worship and serve you yet again, today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.